There is a fifth dimension, beyond that which is known to man. It is a dimension as vast as space and as timeless as infinity. It is a middle ground between light and shadow, between science and superstition, and it lies between the pit of man's fears and the summit of his knowledge. This is a dimension of imagination. It is an area which we call the Twilight Zone. Hey guys, Alf here. Um, back with uh, another Twilight Zone. We're moving our way forward. We're on episode four. And this one is called The 16 Millimeter Shrine. It was directed by Mitchell Lyson, or Leeson, I'm not sure how to pronounce it. Looks like Lyson. And written by Rod Serling. So there's not much trivia to this one, but I'll give you the one that there is, is that uh, the main actress, Ida Lupino, is not only the only person to star in an episode of the twilight zone and then later direct an episode which was the masks which is a very popular one but you know it doesn't come around till the fifth season but she also is the only woman to ever direct a twilight zone episode so how's that for diversity right <laughs> so now on to the story um ida lupino plays barbara dream Barbara Dream, <laughs> Barbara Jean Trenton, who's uh, basically an, an ex-film star. She's getting older. Uh, she was popular in the 30s, and you know now it's 1959. She's like 20 years later. She's uh, yeah, she's basically a has been, but she's like exited from the real world, and all she and she's become like a hermit. She just stays home, and um, has like a small theater in her house where she watches her old movies over and over again. And, you know, and dreams of going back to those days. But, you know, she, obviously she's in modern times. And, yeah, she's basically become one of these people that lives in the past in their former glories and can't move on. Her agent is named Danny Weiss. He's played by Martin Balsam, who's in a lot of Twilight Zone episodes. And he played the psychiatrist in The Time Element, which I reviewed earlier. And, um... He's he basically comes over all the time and tries to convince her to get out to, you know, to call her old friends and stuff and, you know, basically move on with her life. But she's very hesitant to um, at some point he books an appointment with um, a studio head for her to get a job, basically, in a movie. And, um, you know, she at first she's hesitant, but then, you know, he talks her into it and she's like, OK, she gets all dolled up and goes um so when she meets this uh studio director he starts you know he's happy to meet her and this and that and he's you know trying to tell her he's got a great job for her and then he tells her that he's gonna she's gonna play the mother of the main actress in the movie and uh yeah this this uh i guess triggers her and uh she flips out saying you know what i will never play a mother i'll never play anything for the studio so she's basically can't accept that she's gotten older and that she's like you know, at the age to play mothers, basically, in, in shows, and uh, can't accept that, and she goes off on the guy. But in turn, the guy gets mad, and he goes off on her, telling her she's an old has-been and stuff, and basically telling her, like, she needs to accept reality. You're an old woman now. You should, you gotta play roles that are appropriate to your age. She leaves crying. Uh, her agent, Danny, is angry, because, you know, I guess he likes her. I don't know if he likes her romantically, or he just feels bad for her. They never really go into that, but you know, he feels bad for her and, you know, seeing her crying gets him pissed off and he goes, you know, he basically tells the guy off, tells him that he's, you know, an evil, mean person or whatever for making her cry. So, remind me someday when you've gone over the hill and you're down on your hands and knees, remind me to give you a swift kick in the teeth so that you know exactly how it feels. At some point you find out, you know, she locked herself in a room after that. She doesn't want to come out. She doesn't want to see anybody. But Danny comes again. And he came up with an idea and he heard that Jerry Herndon, who was an old actor, used to play be the leading man for her in some of the old movies, was in town. And um, that's like, you know, that that brings life into her eyes. And she's like, what? You know, at first she didn't want to come out, meet, do anything. But then once she heard that, she was like, oh, my God. So she gets all excited. She tell you know, he's like, oh, yeah, he's on his way. We'll meet you downstairs. And she's like, yeah, I'll go get ready. You know, I'll put my face on and all that. So she dolls herself up again, comes downstairs and realizes 
Jerry Herndon is an old man now, you know, he's all white haired, he got old man glasses on, you know, he just looks like some, you know, innocent old man, doesn't look like he was ever an actor or anything. And she, you know, you see her face, she's in shock. And she's like, you know, you always imagine things stay the same, you don't realize how much things change over time. And she's talking to him, real, you know, he, he says that he retired from acting a long time ago. And now he's an owner of a chain grocery store in the region. And that's basically what he does. He has a family, you know, he has kids and He's basically moved on with his life and he looks happy, but she's not happy and she's she gets upset about this and eventually starts, you know, losing it basically. And she has a picture of him when he was young in one of the like a headshot from one of the movies they did when they were younger. And she goes up to that and she was like, this is the Jerry I want, not some, you know, like doddering old man and stuff. So uh, eventually he leaves. She makes him feel shitty basically because she's saying he's an old man and she doesn't want him around and it basically reminds her of how old she is right she still wants to live in the old days when she was young so again she sticks herself in her room and or in the theater room and starts watching old movies again danny you know danny and the other guy leave eventually again danny comes back oh no wait uh, the, the maid now they'll show the maid and she goes into the theater room to bring her you know something to drink and a snack and um she walks in, she's calling out to her, she doesn't see her, she walks up to the chair, she's not on the chair, then she looks at the theater screen, and the maid, you hear the maid yell and drop the tray of the, you know, with the drink and the food on it, and it spills all over the place, she runs out of the room. The scene skips, apparently she called Danny, right? And now it's Danny comes in and she's telling him, I checked the whole house, she's gone. I, I can't find her anywhere. But she had mentioned earlier that sometimes she swears she sees her as she is now on the movie screen. So at this point, Danny's like, well, she's nowhere to be found, blah, blah, blah. And I guess he remembers that she said that. So he puts on, he goes into the theater room and he puts the movie on, right? He, he rewinds the projector and loads it up and starts it on. And we see the movie, and in the movie, it's her living room, and all the old actors she used to work with at their young age are there. It's like a party, and then he sees Barbara, and she's like she was now, like an older lady, but she's in the movie, surrounded by these young people living, you know, basically getting her wish. She's in the movie now. She's going to forever live in a young world, and she sees it. Danny starts yelling at the screen. Like, Barbara, come back. <laughs> you know, that's not reality. This is the real world. Come back to the real world. And uh, you see her look at the screen as she throws her scarf off the stairs and it lands on the living room floor. And he keeps yelling for her to come back, but she leaves. She goes upstairs with all the other actors and the, the, the show and the movie ends. So at this point, Danny goes into the living room and he sees her scarf and the, the scarf has a note. And he says, it says, two wishes barbie to the ones that come true so basically in the end we find out that you know she got her wish she wanted to live in that movie world she you know she grew up in or was doing when she was young and she got to go back to live in her older days the morality behind this is kind of weird because you know you you kind of get the idea the whole time you know she's stuck in the past and it's not a good thing to be stuck in the past you know living off your former glories and not moving ahead because you're you're stuck in your older glories that you can't have anymore instead of making your moving forward and making new glories you're stuck in these old glories and you can't get past them so that's not a good thing but in the end she still gets her wish she gets to live in her old days which is something which is not realistic right that's not going to happen in real life but i guess the morality is still there it's just put in a fantasy way so i mean you take out the fantasy and you see that it's more like she died, right? <laughs> like, maybe that's what it is. Like, in real life, you would die instead of, like, going to another world, right? So, and she's gone from reality. She never lived in reality. So it's not a good thing. In, in the end, it, it reminds me of, like, living in the past kind of reminds me of Al Bundy from Married to Children, where, you know, he was just a shoe salesman living in a life with shitty kids and a shitty wife. And um, the only glory, the only th time he had to boast about how good his life was was talking about high school and talking about how how many touchdowns he scored in poke high playing football you know like that that was his former glories and he never moved forward to new glories right he was stuck in his life and the only things that brought him solace was to look back towards his old glories and that's kind of what this woman was doing so but that's pretty much it uh don't live in the past <laughs> you know move forward find new things to conquer 
and make your life better as opposed to being miserable and only looking at the past about how good the past was. And it says uh, you can make current life or the future even better than your past life if you wanted to and if you work towards it. But if you're stuck in your old life, you're not going to work on, towards it. So that's about it. Um, yeah, I'll be back soon with the next episode, which is Walking Distance, a pretty good one. Um, I'm going to be excited about going through that one. This one is decent. Not great. It's a bit charming, but it does. it's not very deep. Uh, it's kind of cliched, I would say. But um, not terrible. Worth a watch if you're going to watch them all. I mean, th this isn't a bad one, per se. So I hope you enjoyed this. Um, yeah, I'll be back soon with Walking Distance. See you guys. Barbie, come back. Please, Barbie. Barbie! Come back, Barbie!